Are you serious? Get some coffee. What? This is Rosh Hashanah. And let me just say to you, we're ex anticipating that the rabbis will walk out near the Wailing Wall there in Jerusalem, look up into the sky here in about an hour and a half, and see the new moon. The beginning of the Jewish calendar, the new year, the confirmation of the feast of the trumpets must be done by two rabbi priests confirming that they see the new moon. Yesterday was the beginning of the feast, but when they walked out there for the 41 minutes at the sunset and the setting of the moon, they were looking for the moon. They did not see it, and thus Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of the Trumpets, delayed till today. So at sunset in Jerusalem, they will look again. That's approximately 11.42 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here in America. We'll wait and see what they find. Let me get to some breaking news. The Straits of Hermuse. And this is the Straits of Hermuse. I want to show it to you. And of course, right... Paul Begley Technology here. Of course, right here... Right here is the very tight spot. Now, 35% of the, world, the world's crude oil has to pass through the Straits of Hormuz. 35%. So what's going on? Let me tell you now. Armanda of British naval power is massing in the Gulf as Israel prepares for an Iranian strike. An Amanda, Amanda of U.S. and British naval power is massing in the Persian Gulf in belief that Israel is considering a preemptive strike against Iran and their covert nuclear weapon program. Um, battleships, aircraft carriers, minesweepers, submarines from 25 different nations of the world are converging on this strategically important position of the Straits of Hermuz. What? Are you serious? 25 nations of the world. Did you know about it? Did they tell you about it on NBC? Were they talking about it on CNN? How about Fox? No. Why not? Because. It doesn't fit the political narrative. They're more worried about who's going to win the election, Obama or Mitt Romney. They better be worried about whether or not the end of the world is about ready to happen. They better start worrying about whether or not World War III is about ready to explode. They better start worrying about whether or not their sins are washed under the blood of Jesus Christ and preparing for the King of Kings. The bride is getting ready to leave. Are you serious? Are you serious? I mean, I want to be caught up to be with the Lord. What? Battleships, aircraft carriers, minesweepers, submarines from 25 nations of the world are converging on this strategically important Strait of Hormuz in an unprecedented show of force as Israel and Iran move toward the brink of war. Western leaders are convinced that Iran will retaliate to any attacks by attempting to blow up mines or create a blockade or sink oil tankers in that shipping lane which passes through the Straits of Hormuz where 18 million barrels of oil every day must pass through to keep the world's economy turning. That's approximately 35% of the world's Petroleum traded by sea. What? So listen to me. We're not talking about some little bitty deal here. We're talking about with the brink of a major Middle Eastern war and a control for the world's energy. And in other words, what Iran is saying, if you, if Israel attacks us, if Israel strikes us or strikes our nuclear underground nuclear facilities where we're enriching the uranium. If we can't have power, none of you can. We'll take the oil tankers. We'll blow up the oil tankers in the Straits of Hormuz. We'll block the Straits of Hormuz. We'll take position. 
So obviously, the United States of America and the British and 25 nations actually are there now. This is a volatile day. You think it's dangerous that 22 of the American embassies were under siege, were being rioting and attacked in 22, 22 nations of the world, including nations like Australia and England. And we know that they're our allies, but it just shows you that the Muslim influence, radical Islam, is literally spreading into nations of the world and are voicing their opinions. Now, meanwhile... There's another set of conflict going on. It seems to be happening simultaneously. And that's in China. The Chinese people, 80,000 of them, got up and started rioting and converging on the Japanese embassy. This has to do about an old score that needs to be settled over the discrepancy of some of the land. And they tried to overtake the Japanese embassy. What? They're a communist nation in China. They're not even allowed to practice freedom of speech. But what do you do when 80,000 people are angry? And while that was going on, a typhoon of biblical proportions was coming ashore in Japan, flooding out tens of thousands of people without power and leaving torrential rains and flooding of absolute apocalyptic a scenario. But wait, there's more. Their ambassador of Japan to China mysteriously got sick, went to the hospital and died. He had just been newly appointed and he'd only been in power two days, dead. So he's dying. The Japanese ambassador to China dies mysteriously. A typhoon hits Japan and 80,000 Chinese converge on Japan's embassies. Meanwhile, 25 nations of the world are sending battleships, aircraft carriers, minesweepers, and submarines into the Straits of Hormuz as Israel and Iran are staring down the barrel of a gun at one another. And while that's going on, Mohammed Mercy is allowing Christians to be crucified in the trees out front of his presidential palace there in Egypt. And if that's not enough issues... We have uh, the, the fact that we have literally the United Nations meeting scheduled to begin and Mohammed Mercy is going to sit down with Iran's president, Maud Ahmadinejad, and the Secretary General of the United Nations in a little cafe somewhere in New York just as the United Nations ceremonies begin. And they've invited the President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, will he attend that meeting? We're praying for the President of the United States that he makes the right decision. I say, no, don't go to the meeting. Cancel it. Matter of fact, cancel both Mohammed Mercy and Ahmadullah visas. Don't allow them in this country and, until they stop the threats of war, of nuclear weapons on Israel, and the crucifixions of the Coptic Christians in Egypt. But I'm not the President of the United States. So we're going to pray for him because he has more information than I could ever even imagine. Are you saved? Something biblical is going on. And oh, by the way, there is earth volcanoes. There was a major volcano in Indonesia that erupted yesterday. And also volcanoes erupted, I mean, in Mexico, in Guatemala. In Indonesia, uh, I mean, all over the world, one, two, three, four, five, Fiji, six, seven major volcanoes all spewing ash and lava smoke on the same day. They were all rumbling and spumbling and tumbling. And as Rosh Hashanah was being delayed and as the world, did you, I mean, can I tell you something? I've shared this many times. But whatever is going on in the spiritual realm will manifest in the physical realm or nature or the natural realm. And with all of these seven volcanoes rumbling, you got to wonder, what are we in store for in the next few days? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Time is running out. Send me a personal message. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want